Okay, good. Well, um, good evening, and um, special welcome this evening to my um, uh, audience in Australia. <laughs> I do get uh, emails from uh, folks in Australia on the U YouTube, so I, I thought that um, <laughs> I might mention you guys. Anyway, we're not talking about Australia tonight, we're talking about Spain. <clears throat> the uh, the um, title of the lesson is The Role of Spain in the History of Ireland. So I didn't say what period, just Spain. But of course, Spain didn't become Spain until probably 16th century, 1500s. Yeah, well, prior to that, it was all kinds of things, um, but not really uh, Spain. I suppose you, you, could, you, could, um, you could date it from um, uh, Ferdinand and uh, and Elizabeth, where is it? Of Castile, Isabella. Isabella of Castile, yeah, the lady that pawned the jewel, the the, the, jewel, the jewels for uh, <clears throat> for uh, what was that guy that can't, that discovered America again? Christopher Columbus. Pardon? Who? Chris. Well. Well, Mr. Columbus. Mr. Columbus. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So in 1492, he sailed the ocean blue. Um, I'm going to go back a lot further than that um, because there's some kind of a, um, a relationship, a special relationship with Spain that the Irish are conscious of and nobody quite understands why. Everybody has a different um, explanation for why, uh, but I don't think any of them really catch the whole thing. It's just so, so long-standing. Um, some people think that the Celts who colonized Ireland, <clears throat> assuming that you believe it's a Celtic country, came from Spain. That's partially true, or well it is true, but it's only part of the answer. Um, it is, it is um, generally recognized by scholars that um, the Celts came directly to Ireland. In other words, they didn't come through England. Um, and that's, that's not an anti-English thing. That's, uh, I, it's, it's, it's widely believed or acknowledged for, for many reasons. Um, and they didn't sort of go around England to get there. They came directly from Spain. So it's, a very, it's, it's not just a, a myth in uh, the Irish mythology. It's, it's, um, it's, it's an accepted belief in the academic world. So that's kind of strange to me because we know that there was a relationship with Spain, or at least whatever it was called in the Iberian Peninsula, um, long before the, the Celts came there. The Celts came from northern Spain. We do know that the Celts are at least what we know of them or think we know about them. Um, they did expand into Spain, into northern Spain, not, not southern Spain. But they, they, they conquered a good deal of Central Europe and, um, and uh, northern, Europe, northern Italy and, of course, Gaul. The, the, um, the, the Romans call them Galli and uh, the Greeks call them Keltoi. So the name Gale and Gallic and Gaul and all those is interchangeable with Celt. Uh, from a, um, <clears throat> a classical point of view, the two, the two classic, classical worlds, uh, Greek and Rome, um, knew them as, as either Celts or uh, Galli. Um, and uh, the northern portion of Spain was definitely Gallic, um, rather than, uh, well, only because the Romans tended to um, come in contact with the Celts in northern Spain. Because as you know, the Romans um, colonized or ca conquered all of the Iberian Peninsula, all of Spain. Um, <clears throat> now, it's interesting that long before modern Spain started to call itself Spain uh, with the decline of the monarchies, the Irish always called it Spain, going back into the uh, 
the old manuscripts and, and, and the old uh, traditions, uh, they always referred to, to as uh, uh, Spain or Spania or various versions of, of Spain. So just like ERA is a very old name for Ireland, Spain is a very old name for Spain, for the Iberian Peninsula. So that's kind of nice that's, that the, the, uh, the name has come back. Um, so when Ireland was in trouble and, and had problems, it tended naturally to identify with Spain. Now, a lot of people will tell you, well, that's because it was Catholic and Ireland was, ca Ireland was Catholic and it was... No, it had nothing to do with religion. The Irish were not very religious. Everybody thinks they were. Uh, they were not terribly religious until relig the Catholic religion became identified with their nationalism, then they became religious. Uh, and if I may digress for a moment, I've talked about this before, that how the Irish never really took their religion terribly secret seriously, and that's why I don't believe there's any such race as the Scots-Irish, or the Scotch-Irish, that you hear so much about. Um, well, first of all, the, the, um, the, the Scotch would never call themselves Irish, or at least the Scotch that we think of as Scots, that is, the Protestant Scots, the Reformed Scots, the Scots after, after Calvin and, uh, and Knox. So the likelihood of um, anybody, any Scottish people, calling themselves Scotch-Irish in America is pretty, pretty well nil. Uh, at least, you know, the, what we consider to be the Scots-Irish. So chances are <clears throat> it was just to disguise the fact that the, the Irish were so, so important in the early formation of America that uh, the um, revisionist historians call them Scots-Irish. It didn't sound, you know, it knocked the edge off of it, if you like, for them. I think it was 25 of the top generals for, Washington, for, for George Washington were all Irish-born. And now, of course, the history book says that they're actually Scots-Irish. Well, <laughs> they wouldn't, they would, <laughs> they would not have, they would not have, they'd say, what are you talking about, Scots-Irish? They would not have known that. Um, Jackson is considered to be Scots-Irish. He identified himself as Irish and very proud of it. And he never once used the word Scots-Irish. So, so that's an interesting, an, an interesting thing. Yes, sir? It's Scots and Scotch. Well, it used to be called Scotch, and then they, Scott, this, it's like what ha was happening here, privatization of a word. It was like, you know, the PC, the, the personal computer became identified with Microsoft. And so, uh, so the Scotch whiskey marketing board um, uh, hijacked the name Scotch and uh, claim that it's actually a brand name and they can they will threaten to sue you if you use the word Scotch in anything other than to describe a whiskey and a lot of Scotch people will tell you I'm not a whiskey I'm a Scotsman you know so that they will they will uh, so it's it, it, it there was no thing as nobody would call anybody a Scots a Scotsman or a Scots Irish they would call them Scotch okay. um, just like English um, until a more modern times when as I said the whiskey industry um, appropriated the word um, and then people started using uh, Scots um, but the the the, um, the the way people saw themselves is important because it changes over time. Uh, people, um, and uh, you know, as I said, like Spanish people probably wouldn't, uh, there would have been way, way, way back that they would have probably maybe called themselves Spanish prior to the, uh, the Moors, as they were known as, uh, conquering and occupying Spain. And there weren't Moors either. <laughs> um, they were um, basically North Africans, but we called them, they were known in Europe as, as Moors. And yeah, Morocco is a country directly across from uh, Spain, and they did certainly come through Morocco. 
so in that sense, there were more. So it's kind of like the old thing that everybody, every Irish American you meet, their mother came, or their grandmother came from County Cork. Yes, she did. That's where she got the on the boat. So it's the same sort of thing. A lot of the people who migrated across into Spain from uh, North Africa and all the way down to the Middle East, they were termed uh, Moors. Um, Aria would probably tell you a lot more about uh, the difference between uh, the various um, uh, peoples along the north coast of um, Italy, or of uh, Africa. But, uh, oh, here's the curtain lady. Yeah. We didn't know it was your, I didn't know it was your day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is my day. Every day is your day. <clears throat> um, so, uh, so, so you can see where I'm going with this. I'm sort of telling you that the relationship between the Irish and the Spanish is a lot looser, or at least I'm trying to suggest that it's a lot looser in the sense that people who came from that area and, and uh, the, the Irish people. So 